Welcome to the October 2023 edition of Florida by the Numbers, brought to you live from the 2023 Future of Florida Forum in Orlando. I'm Sheridan Meek, Senior Research Economist for the Florida Chamber Foundation, and I'm going to give you an update on the latest metrics that matter to securing Florida's future. Taking a high-level look at Florida's economy, there have been many changes over the last month. Current labor market statistics were released, as well as updates on the housing market, Floridians' outlook on the economy, and a big win for Florida's manufacturing industry. These metrics and more are tracked on the floridascorecard.org at both the state and the county level. Now let's take a closer look at what these metrics mean for Florida's economy. Looking first at Florida's labor market, employment rose by nearly 20,000 jobs in September, now only slightly below 9.8 million. This was a 0.2% increase over the month and an addition of 241,000 jobs over the year. Although Florida has continued to add jobs since April of 2021, the job growth has seen a downward trend over the past two years. As expected, the trend persisted this month as the annual addition of over 240,000 jobs was a 2.5% increase down from 2.8 last month. This slower job growth is not necessarily negative as a deceleration in job growth can help reduce the chances of inflation and a possible recession. The U.S. growth rate ticked up one percentage point, but the big picture remains the same at the national level. Jobs are still being added, but at a slower pace. September's month-over-month -month job gain was 19,600, an increase of 0.2%. The monthly job gain has remained positive, but has varied from month to month with this monthly increase only slightly larger than last month. Florida only saw an increase in half of the eight major industries over the month, but these figures are susceptible to a lot of fluctuation, so this is not indicative of overall trends. Annual growth rates give us a better picture of the trends in the economy. As mentioned earlier, the 2.5% growth rate in September is a decline from the month prior. Breaking it down by sector, the information industry was the only sector to see a slight decline. This is consistent with last month, still not any indication of an overall trend in the industry, but something to keep an eye on. There has, however, been a trend in the annual industry increases, as the education and health services industry has seen the top growth for the past few months. Now shifting our focus to unemployment. The number of unemployed Floridians increased by 6,000 from August to September, and the unemployment rate increased slightly to 2.8%. This increase in unemployment was also coupled with a slight decline in open jobs, narrowing Florida's gap between available workers and open jobs. Currently, for every 100 jobs needing workers, 76 Floridians are looking for work. Our team has analyzed the open jobs data for the 10 most populous states in the U.S and we have seen that this challenge is not unique to Florida. Other states, such as North Carolina, are also experiencing a labor shortage, with 75 unemployed people for every 100 open jobs. Michigan has a bit more balance in the labor market, with 97 people seeking work for every 100 open jobs. And lastly, New York sees a different labor market challenge, with more unemployed people seeking work than open jobs. To be exact, 137 job seekers per 100 open jobs. Florida's consumer sentiment measures Floridians' outlook on the economy, and it has been fluctuating in recent months. Consumer sentiment saw a decline in September, down 1.2 points from August. This more negative view of the economy is likely because the September figure reflects the impact of Hurricane Adalia. Because the dip is likely due to a natural disaster, it is not expected to be lasting. The national consumer sentiment also saw a dip in September, which narrows the gap between Florida's outlook and the U.S. outlook, which is currently more positive than ours. As we expect the consumer sentiment to improve next month, we will be keeping an eye on how Floridian's outlook compares to the nation, as there is potential for it to surpass it. Let's now analyze the housing market as it's continuing to cool. September's 21,335 single-family housing sales figure was a decline from the previous month, but up just over 6% from a year ago. Despite seeing the first annual increase in recent months, the rolling annual average continues to get lower, showing that on the whole, Florida's housing market has slowed significantly over the past couple of years. Despite this overall decline in demand, 
the prices have remained consistent in recent months. This month's median sale price was $409,000, which is 1.3% higher than September of last year, and up over 50% from early 2020. This decline in sales, coupled with consistently high prices, is likely due to prevailing high mortgage rates as consumers await a decrease in interest rates. Florida's manufacturing industry hit a big milestone last month as employment in the sector rose to top 10 in the country. The most recent job statistics show that Florida remained 10th in the nation in September, above New York, by just over 1,000 jobs. However, as we look towards the Florida 2030 blueprint goal of being a top five state for manufacturing, there is still plenty of work to be done. Florida trails North Carolina by 50,000 manufacturing jobs, and to reach the Florida 2030 goal, the state needs to surpass Pennsylvania, who currently has 145,000 more manufacturing jobs. The FloridaScorecard.org continues to track the metrics discussed today, in addition to hundreds of other state and county level metrics. The Florida Scorecard and our team's accompanying research and analysis on these metrics are made possible by the leadership of the Florida Chamber Foundation's Community Development Partners. To stay up to date on the metrics that matter to securing the future of Florida as soon as they are released, there are a couple of ways you can stay connected. Follow at FloridaBTN on Twitter, where updated figures and accompanying analysis are tweeted instantly. Also, be sure to check the FloridaScorecard.org on a regular basis. Updated metrics are added as soon as available to help Florida leaders lead. If you have any questions regarding the topics covered today or the work of the Florida Chamber Foundation, please reach out to me or any member of the Foundation team through the information on the screen. From everyone at the Florida Chamber, thank you for tuning in to hear more about the metrics that matter to securing Florida's future. Please join us again in November for another edition of Florida by the Numbers. Thank you. <laughs>